Longboarding and nose riding. They go hand in hand, but to what extent does our fixation on nose riding hinder our holistic approach to wave riding on longboards, whether this be our turns or interpretation of the wave itself? Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to find out. I'm Ben Considine, and this is The Sunday Glide. So I haven't taken nose riding out of my surfing ever. I absolutely love nose riding. It takes so much of my time and focus. I sometimes wonder whether I'm doing other areas of my surfing a disservice. So today's gonna be interesting. Let's see how we go. The conditions today were pretty tricky, not allowing for a lot of walls or long rides. So I'd say it was a pretty good day to ditch the nose riding and see how this approach would impact my surfing. Straight away, I noticed something massive from this approach. On the first couple of waves here, you can see how I'm holding myself back from going two more steps to the nose. What this actually allows for though, is for me to take a step back onto the tail more quickly and in a much tighter position in the pocket than if I'd fit the nose right in. I was super happy with this start to the session and I had an important realization for my surfing because of this and I'll touch on that later. The same goes here, optimising for speed and positioning for the turn coming down the line, as opposed to the nose ride, which I would have done any other day. At the beginning of the session though, I was obviously placing so much emphasis on my turns that I was trying to force them into sections that weren't suitable. Here's just a few examples. This was a touch frustrating, and in the session, I knew after a few of these that I needed to course correct a little bit, which led me to the next key learning, resulting in some of the best feeling turns I've had in a while. Whether it's good or not, I've actually learned that a key focus for a lot of my turns has been about positioning for the next nose ride, as opposed to making the turn as good as possible. In this session, I became firstly more selective around where I was completing my turns, but also how I completed them, drawing them out further when possible, cutting them short when I needed to continue down the line, things I've not paid as close attention to for a long, long time, which was a great new perspective. The other key takeaway was how I noticed the variety in my surfing and waves was now reliant on the different turns I could perform, rather than simply the contrast between nose rides and turns, which for me can lend itself to completing the same turns over and over again. This got the creative juices flowing in my head and led to a new variation I hadn't completed in my surfing before, but had seen working really nicely for other surfers. The idea here is to invert the typical approach to the start of the wave, where we set up for the nose ride and then turn, by completing the top turn first. You can notice here that I'm using the steep section and speed from the bottom turn off the takeoff to take a more vertical approach to the start of the wave. This felt great when done right and it's definitely something I'll do more of. 
Something else that I think this wave particularly highlights quite nicely is how the cross stepping is still used as a functional way to generate speed by coming into the middle of the board and then coming to the tail when turning is required, as opposed to thinking of cross stepping as merely a way of approaching the nose. The other new variation I was trialling was the drop knee fade right off the takeoff instead of the fade takeoff itself. I've seen the likes of Joel Shu to do this as another method of getting critical at the start of the wave, and I think it works pretty well. completely transparent and admit that at the end of the session I did hit the nose a few times just to make sure it was still working. Looks like everything's still in check. Okay, so first and foremost, I do think that nose riding is a super important part of longboarding. But if today's taught me anything, it's that longboarding is so much more than just nose riding. And I think sometimes I even take that for granted. I think there's a beautiful approach to the turning, the speed generation, variations of takeoffs and everything else. And I think that we should really prioritize that in longboarding. Um, and I think even from today, what I've noticed is that there's still so much progress in these areas to make for my own surfing, um, which has been a good eye opener for me as well. So the key takeaways, first of all, are going to be more around, I guess, that narrow focus and what that's showed me. I think to improve your turning, it is a really good idea to make sure we're focusing on either a particular type of turn or just your turns. Um, as I've said previously, a nose riding and making that a big part of my surfing. Sometimes I don't focus on the turns as much because it is more about positioning on the wave to head to the nose, um, which I think can be a bad habit to get stuck into because then you don't try the different variations of turns and everything like that, um, which even in this session, I think had a pretty good um, difference in, in my turning and something that I'll definitely hope to uh, pull into my next few sessions as well. And I think that narrow focus just also helps you identify the exact things that you should be working on and having that repetition so that time over time, you can see where the uh, changes are coming in, um, whether that be where you're performing it on the wave, how long you're holding it for, um, cutting the turn shorter in the steeper sections, things like that, which are gonna be really, really important to your progress with that as well. And I think just make you a much better long border overall. So yeah, this has been able to give me a really good insight into the areas that I can improve in my own surfing and hopefully it'll do the same for you. We'll leave it there today. Hope you guys are getting waves. We'll catch you on the next one. Ew.